Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today we're excited to check out Leverage, a game of strategy and suspense from Milton Bradley. This is ages 10 plus. It's for two players. It'll take about 15 to 20 minutes to play. And in Leverage, you are going to have a board in the middle that is actually a balancing board. And you're going to be moving pieces, trying not to get your side of the board to touch the table and stay on the table because then you will lose your oh-so-valid life-slash-balancing point. It's an abstract strategy game with a gimmick, but does the gimmick work? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Leverage. So first of all, we're going to handy dandy rule sheet. It's one really long page. It's got plenty of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done. Should have you up and running in no time at all. Also, I can teach you how to play the game right now because it is a very simple game. So in Leverage, this is an abstract strategy game where you're going to have two different ways to win. The first way you can win is by making your opponent lose all of these point pieces all the way back here. Uh, the next way you can win is by moving all of your colored pieces into your opponent's safety zone. And if you do that, then you immediately win the game. What am I talking about? Let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, component-wise, obviously, we have this very distinctive board, which is actually held up on this balancing board right here. This game is all about balance. Next, each player is going to have their area of pieces, and this is called your safety zone. Any piece in either of the safety zones cannot be captured, and that's very important. Your piece, your opponent's piece, if it's right here, it cannot be captured. And the safety zones are outlined by this grayish circle right there. Next, you're going to have these gray pieces along the back. These are pieces that you will not be moving unless the balance of the board is thrown off. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. The last thing I want to mention is that there are different sized pieces, and they do have different weights. So we have the big ones, the medium ones, and the small ones, and they are not created equal. Small pieces can capture ev can capture the big and medium pieces. Uh, the medium pieces can capture the medium pieces and the big pieces, and then the big pieces can't capture anything. They are purely for moving around the board, but they are really good at upsetting the balance of the board because you want to upset the balance of the board to make your opponent lose pieces. So let's just go over how the game is played. On your turn, you're going to take one move and only one move. And this game has somewhat similar to checkers rules, kind of really not. You know what? It actually doesn't at all now I think about it. How it works is you're going to be able to jump over any piece on the board as long as it's directly in front of you or directly diagonal. So if I wanted to, I could make this move right there. It's not really that smart of a move because it doesn't help me at all. So we're going to take that back. We're not actually going to do that. But it is a move that I can make. Uh, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move this guy bloop, right there. And then we check for the balance of the board. The board is finely balanced, even though I think it is a little bit off the center. And then it's going to be the next player's turn. And he's going to go ahead and just go, he'll go just like that. And then the next player is going to go. And he wants to get one of these big pieces out there because he's really all about unbalancing the board. So he's going to move that one one space forward. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go like, uh, do, 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 do. what can I do? I'm going to go like, bloop, bloop, bloop. So I just jumped over all those pieces. And that's fine, but we're still checking the balance of the board right now. The balance of the board is fine. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and just say, I don't know. Let's go right here. Yeah, that's, that's a big piece right there that we just set up. And then we got this guy going over here. He's going to move one of his big ones forward, still in the safety zone. And now this guy is going to make a pretty big move. So what he's going to do is he's going to go jump, jump. And he moved his big piece really far forward. And that right side is about on the table. Not actually, is it resting on the table? The table is not completely flat, which does mess with it. No, I would say not quite. So then this guy is going to jump right here. But now what this guy is going to do is he's going to get another big piece up. Boom. Boom. And now it very clearly is leaning down. First you get to try to pick it up once to see if it will stay down. But no, that is not the case. Which means now I have to take out one of my pieces, put it over here, and I have lost. I am one-tenth of the way to losing the game uh, because of that. 
But what can really throw off the balance is let's just let's just speed things up a little bit. There we go. So we sped everything up. So this is what's on the board right now. I know it's unbalanced, but I just want to show you an example of what can happen. Because movement in this game is very free-flowing, very crazy. So the first thing I might say, ooh, this is a good move. I'm going to jump here, and that doesn't get captured because small ones can't get captured. I'm going to jump here, which means this is immediately taken off the board. I'm going to go here, which means that is immediately taken off the board. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. So I could legally make that move and capture two big pieces. I also could then uh, jump back if I wanted to and just say, you know what, I kind of don't want that in the safety zone yet. I want to position it somewhere else. But the movement in the game is very free form. As long as you have someone to jump over, either your color or their color, you can make the move. It's very interesting in that aspect. But you're going to continue to go until you have all of your pieces into the safety zone. Uh, all the pieces that you have on the board, I should say, into the safety zone, or until these pieces run out for one side, in which case the, uh, the player that gets in the safety zone or the other player who does not lose all their pieces will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Leverage. Alrighty then, Leverage from Milton Bradley. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, this is a two-player abstract strategy game, which immediately, some people, way too small of a player count, and some people just do not like abstract strategy games. Now, I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of abstract strategy games. You know, I'll play them from time to time, but I don't own that many. This is one of the better ones that I have played. I'll talk more about that in the pros, but still, take that abstract strategy game concept with a grain of salt. Also, if you don't have a flat playing surface, which I feel like is a very niche thing, but I mean, like, if you have my kind of table where the felt pushes up, this one might not be for you because you really are going to need a flat playing surface. You can kind of figure it out without it, but still, ideally, you have a flat playing surface. Uh, another con that I have with this game is that I wish it was slightly, just a teeny weeny bit easier to win the game uh, with the balancing points, because that doesn't happen terribly often. I think I've played this about, I've seen it played, and I've played it about 10 to 12 times now in my classroom, and with, with an adult as well. And every single time, the victory was by getting all your pieces into the safety zone. And I wish it was just a little bit more viable the concept of, you know, getting your big pieces all the way over to their side and then just kind of weighing down the board and then taking out their life points. Like, I love the idea of two victory conditions, but if this game were ever to be redone, I would like it if that was just ever so slightly easier. Any other cons I have with the game? No. I mean, you gotta know it's a two-player abstract strategy game. Uh, one game is not going to be that different from the next game to the next game to the next game. And also, it is a bit repetitive. On your turn, you're just going to make a move, 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 make a move. There's no cards. There's no special things to do at all. So, got to know that. But moving on to the pros, Leverage is a really great abstract strategy game. And I was very pleasantly surprised. If you didn't know, I recently came into about 400 thrift shop games. And this is one of them. I've probably gone through about 50 of them now. And this is, without a doubt, the best one that I've played. Well, not, I would say without a doubt. It's it's one of the best ones, if not the best one I've played. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. It's all about the gimmick. This game is all about that balancing gimmick. And the gimmick really does work. I was uh, kind of blown away by this game. The kids in my class. I brought in probably four or five other abstract strategy games from the 1980s, the 1970s, the 1990s. And this is, without a doubt, the one that has went over the best. I liked it so much, I even played it with an adult who came over to play a game with me. I was like, hey, check this game out. This game is really cool. And he was like, man, that is a really good game. And, and there's no two buts about it. The gimmick works, and so the game works. So what do I like about the game? First, two different victory conditions. I'm always a big fan of alternate victory conditions. Even though, as I mentioned, it's not the easiest to actually achieve the secondary victory condition, it still is nice that it's always there. I also like the balancing act that this game is, without, with no pun intended. You know, it's like, all right, do I try to get those big pieces all the way to the back so I can try to, you know, take away some of their valuable points and maybe force them to do something they don't want to do? Or do I just want to focus on getting all my pieces into the safe zone super duper fast? Another thing I really enjoyed about this game was the fact that getting your losing pieces is not actually that terrible a thing in this game. Most of the time in most games, checkers, chess, other abstract strategy games, when someone captures your pieces, that is bad. In this game, it's like, well, that's one less piece I actually have to get into the safety zone. And when you start thinking about it like that, you kind of like, well, you know, maybe I do want to sacrifice some of these big pieces because that might be my best... 
uh, my best strategy at this point. So you can kind of change your strategy mid-game, which I like a lot as well. In the end, Leverage. If you can find this at a thrift shop, this is definitely one I recommend checking out if you like two-player games, uh, especially if you like abstract strategy games. Because I mentioned, I'm not the biggest abstract strategy game fan, but this, I still feel, is a great game and a great abstract strategy game. So that is Leverage from Milton Bradley. Definitely one you might want to go back and revisit. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what's been your best thrift store find ever. What's the best game you ever picked up at a thrift store? Uh, for me personally, it would be... I've, I've had pretty crummy luck at thrift stores, I do believe. Oh, I picked up the Game of Thrones uh, living card game. The, not the good version, but the HBO version. And that was a dollar. It's still sitting there unopened. So I guess I've had very little luck at thrift stores. But let me know in the comments below. What is your best thrift store find? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.